was a tune called The Butterfly. A beautiful melody, has quite a haunting sound to it. Doesn't need to be played too fast, although you can play it a lot quicker if you, if you so desire. The nice thing about this tune is because it's written in 9-8, it has a lovely sort of lilting quality to it. There are three parts to the tune, so in this video I'm going to play each of the three parts and I'm going to just try and point out some of the simple embellishments that you can add to this tune. So if you are learning this tune and you may not read musical notation, you may be able to pick up the basic melody from this video. The first section. The interesting thing there is that slide on the A string. It starts from just below the first note and I slide up to the first note. Now also if you bridge your first finger between the A and the D string so you're, you're playing both notes simultaneously you can drop from the A to that next note on the D string quite quickly. So that's a useful thing to know. The B section of the tune goes like this. And then it repeats. interesting thing is there, when you reach that top note with your little finger, your pinky, that's like a turning point and it's nice just to emphasise that note slightly more than the others and perhaps hold it for a slight fraction longer. So the third part of the tune sounds like this. interesting thing there is the bowing, it's sort of very rhythmical. It's backwards and forwards like that. So the important things are certainly making sure that you get those slides in and the most important one, the one that seems to add to this tune all the way throughout is that first note on the A string. So I'll play the whole tune now, all three parts. And this tune, of course, is in 9-8, so I'll play all three parts through, and then it, you may be able to wish to follow along. I won't go too quickly.
Ornamentation. I tend to play some pretty basic ornamentation um, and it follows something like this. I'll play the first section first, the first part of the tune, and I'll try and point out some of the grace notes that I add. played three different grace notes there. The first one was this one and that was just simply where I kept my finger on the middle note, the, the second note of the D string and I just hammered my ring finger down onto the third note, down and then off. I wonder if you heard that. And the next grace note I play is this one. I wonder if you heard that. And all I'm doing there is I'm basically um, running down, but I'm when my middle finger is on the D string, the second note of the D string, and I go to the first note of the D string, I hammer my middle finger onto the second note, on and off. So, from the top, So that's those two grace notes. Let's see what other ones I put into this first part of the tune. I do the same one again there. That's the second second note on the D string. Hammer the, the, the ring finger on the third note and off. On that final part, I'm just, I've got my first finger on the A string, on the first note of the A string, and I hammer down my um, third finger, my ring finger, onto the third note of the A string. So from the top, that in the notation which you will find a link to in at the in the description below this video now the second part of the tune Okay, all I did there was one simple grace note. It's this one. It's where I've got my middle finger on the second note on the E string. And I just hammer down with my ring finger on the third note. Hammer down on and off. So I'll show you that once again in that second part of the tune. So I used it on three occasions there. Try and show you again. Once again I'll indicate on the notation exactly what I play there. Now the final part of the tune, this is sort of quite swingy this part. Okay, grace notes there. All I did was held my first my first finger on the first note of the A string and hammer on and off with my ring finger on the third note. And there again.
again I use that top E string grace note where I've got my middle finger on the second note and I hammer my ring finger on and off the third note. It just embellishes the tune slightly, makes it sound a little bit more interesting. Um, but of course, I think the slide is the most important thing with this tune. So once again, I'll play from the top now and just add some of those grace notes into my playing. I won't go too quickly. Obviously you can play this tune quicker, slower, however you, however you interpret it. Um, I'll play it slightly quicker now. Three, four. Imagine playing that with either a flute player or a whistle player, somebody perhaps backing you up on the guitar. It sounds wonderful, this tune. Uh, there are some great versions out there, people like Kevin Burke. Um, also, there is uh, Tommy Potts, and you can listen to his recording uh, on his album, famous album, The Liffey Banks, and it's, it's definitely a very original style. Tommy Potts had um, and this tune is often attributed to him I'm, I'm not sure who the actual author is but uh, it's said many people say that Tommy wrote this tune so, but it's a wonderful melody and um, great fun to play and uh, I hope this video is of some interest to you and helps you a little in tackling this tune okay thank you very much for watching see you again soon Bye-bye now.